Although insulin has often been crowned the king of the fat storage hormones, we've discussed here on Physionic that there is another factor, its little brother, acylation stimulating protein that mimics insulin in several ways, yet does so in its own unique way. In this content, we'll be going over how ASP, acylation stimulating protein, enacts a fat storage effect like insulin. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around for the science and physiology. Learn your body, a science-based education. This information is provided by a study that is linked to this content along with my notes and any following amendments. Briefly, fat storage is accomplished on a cellular level when stored molecules, known as triglycerides, are cleaved into non-esterified fatty acids by an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase, LPL. Once cleaved, these non-esterified fatty acids, NEFAs, either enter the bloodstream from the vessel containing them or are taken up by fat cells to be restored as triglycerides. Previously, we saw that ASP does not increase LPL activity, unlike insulin, which does increase this enzyme's activity. So, how can ASP enact the same fat storage effect, although it functions differently from insulin? Well, researchers put increasing levels of fatty acid onto fat cells and added ASP to see what effect that might have on the fat cell's ability to incorporate, that's to say store, fat molecules, fatty acids. When ASP was not present, the fat cells had an increasingly hard time storing fatty acids as the fatty acid concentrations increased, meaning the more fat the researchers added to the cells, the less they were able to store within them. However, when ASP was added, although the fat cells still eventually had trouble storing, they were better able to store fat compared to when ASP was not present. The reason they did this experiment is because high levels of NEFAs around the lipoprotein lipase enzyme inhibits the enzyme. So if the enzyme is cleaving many triglycerides into NEFAs and the NEFAs aren't being incorporated into the fat cells, they hang out around the LPL and continue to accumulate until the LPL is inhibited. So the researchers saw that manually adding NEFAs to the liquid around the cells and the LPL led to less and less incorporation into the fat cells, implying LPL inhibition. So to confirm this, they measured the amount of triglycerides still present in the liquid around the cells, as triglycerides are what LPL cleaves to NEFAs, as the researchers manually added more NEFAs to the liquid the cells are in. As anticipated, triglycerides were less and less cleaved, again implying LPL inhibition. Yet when ASP was present, this inhibition was less pronounced, showing a protective effect. So what does this all mean, Nick? All right, I'll break it down, but it's pretty simple. Acylation stimulating protein, ASP, does not increase LPL activity like insulin does but it's thought, according to these researchers, to likely promote enzymes inside the fat cells that help in the fat storage process. By increasing the activity or amount of triglyceride forming enzymes, it pulls more NEFAs newly freed from their triglyceride form in the fat containing vessels like the chylomicron of the intestine into the fat cell. This reduces the NEFAs present around the lipoprotein lipase, the LPLs, thereby reducing their inhibition. So while ASP may not work in the same way insulin does, it still has a remarkably similar overall effect of stuffing more NEFAs into the fat cells, thereby increasing fat storage on the cellular level. With that, I hope you found this informative and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the future. Cheers.